Hi there, Chris here with part two in our look at painting nail brush color shift paint through an airbrush. And so in the previous video, we uh, didn't ha we had limited success. And so in this one, uh, taking some advice from uh, a YouTube user right here, uh, we uh, I'm going to continue on and try again. And as you can see here, I have one that's primed, and I have one that is a gloss black. So we're going to continue on with the with the primed one and the gloss black. Uh, we're going to use the same nail polish here. This is a color shift nail polish, so it's got a ton of mica flakes in it and stuff, and it gives you a nice, you know, uh, metallic effect. But this time we're going to use nail polish thinner. Now this is different from lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner uh, ha has a tendency to smell like gasoline. Uh, the lacquer thinner uh, or uh, the nail polish remover smells more like an acetone based. We're going to use our Patriot 105. We're going to be spraying initially at around 15 psi. We're going to turn the psi down a bit. And when I'm adding the thinner, uh, you seen how much paint I had loaded into the brush. I only add three drops of the nail polish thinner. I use a synthetic brush here to give it a quick mix. I could back feed the airbrush, but uh, I really don't want to kick a little bubbles around. I really don't want to waste the paint, a small amount of paint that I have in the brush. And then really quickly here, I'm going to try it out on the gloss black first. And again, I'm spraying it around 15 PSI and I'm going to keep the brush somewhat close. I'm only about uh, three inches away and I'm going to use up the entire uh, load of paint that I have in the brush and begin spraying it down. And you can see here initially we are getting similar results. So I end up getting a little bit closer, but you can see here how it's really spraying more wet onto the surface. You can see the brush strokes on the surface. And so I'm getting closer and closer. And I think that was the other key factor factor as well was how far away I was from the uh, spoons. I simply take another dollop of paint, throw a little bit of thinner in there. As you can see here, it's going to throw three drops in here. The real nice thing about that uh, nail polish style thinner is that it uh, is a dropper style, so you can get a fairly accurate mixing inside the, uh, the uh, paint pot. And so you can see here again, we're going to try it again on the uh, prime uh, spoon and this uh, spoon was primed in uh, Vallejo black primer and again I'm keeping the brush somewhat closer this time and I'm, I'm again initially I'm, I'm noticing immediately um, better results than what was uh, previously done uh, and you can see there and so really quickly just after one uh, one pass after the dry you can see the, that they're pretty comparable to each other. The, the gloss spoon actually looks a little fuzzier, but again, I was a little, I started a little further away than the previous, uh, than the other brush, or the other brush, uh, or the other spoon, I was a little bit closer. So really quickly, I just take a paper towel and buff the surface off really quick. I touched the other spoon with uh, the uh, paper towel and it actually stayed a little tackier longer versus the gloss spoon, which was kind of weird. So something with the nail polish sitting on that, on that primer, it stayed tackier longer versus the gloss. The gloss, it dried up really quick. Now I'm taking another um, dollop of paint and we are going to apply another coat. And so this time I'm going to apply it fairly close again. And it's the same mixture. I'm, I'm loading in the same uh, amount of paint and I'm using three drops of thinner. And as you can see here, we're getting fairly consistent results on the, the surface here. Again, it's just really kind of building up the color. It's not, uh, it's not really kind of, you know, giving us a, uh, you know, a much uh, smoother effect as I think that's a limitation of the nail polish itself and so you can see here again I'm just kind of quickly laying it down uh, basically only spraying like maybe maybe an inch and a half away two inches away from that surface and then here I'm gonna take the uh, primed uh, spoon and I'm gonna begin putting its second coat down and again, I think with the uh, gloss, if I had kept it a little bit closer, I think it would have been a far better result in the end. But I mean, it, right now, as it will, uh, as we'll see here, uh, keeping the uh, distance close, just a little bit of thinner. I think last time I over thinned as well. And so uh, again, again, I think that plays a huge factor in it. And so here you can see, uh, I quickly uh, gave uh, the one spoon a little bit of a, a buffing and I end up kind of pulling the surface again because I mentioned that it was stay, it stayed tacky for some strange reason. And you can see the other gloss uh, spoon as well. Here, I'm gonna take some Pledge Future Floor Shine here and we're gonna seal these things. Now, basically what's uh, what's not gonna be shown here is how many layers I do and I approximately do about six or seven layers on these uh, surfaces. I basically just, uh, with uh, this um, Pledge Future Floor Shine, I always lay one thin layer down, let it dry, it doesn't take long for it to dry. And then, yeah, you can see there, I tried to buff that surface and then put a whole bunch of little pock marks on the surface. So, yeah, allow your stuff to dry thoroughly before moving on. 
as you can see there. But again, it, I mean, it, with the prime surface, it looks pretty darn good. And uh, you can see here, that's after about two layers and already the one just looks fantastic. Here they are after about seven layers. And you can see how the prime surface looks pretty darn good. But the gloss surface, I don't know, it just it, it just seems to push a little bit more of the metallics forward, it seems. And it takes a little bit more of that um, glossier state. And of course, I mean, that's probably a little bit of a bias, but as you can see how the light plays across that surface. And I mean, this would be, I think, will work really fantastic on a model. And so really quickly here, we're just going to have a quick little side-by-side -side of all of the uh, iterations that we had done. And uh, the first one there is the brushed on. The second one from the right there is the... Uh, 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 airbrush on initially and then the other two uh, that we just completed and I think the airbrush turning the PSI down using an actual uh, thinner uh, works best and uh, keeping your distance really close and I think uh, we have a winner here if you really want to use these colors uh, I think that's really about the best way you can apply it to these models but that's it um, yeah thanks for watching subscribe like and comment and all that other good stuff Oh, 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 oh,